Kia ora guys and welcome back to the black jersey. My name is Max, I'm the host over here at this channel and a big thank you to my patrons as I resume my mission to monopolise coverage on women's rugby here in the southern hemisphere here on YouTube. I'm bringing to you guys the Black Ferns squad for the 2023 WXV which is a new tournament that they're trying to I guess replace I guess end of year tours with going to be a very interesting competition um, get some proper southern versus northern battles going and it's going to be hosted here in New Zealand the first division of this new competition which is a bit of a recent innovation from world rugby a few people are pretty excited and the black ferns have really brought back some experienced players to go hard and try and win this thing so first off we'll get into the team for the hookers we've got Luke Connor and Georgia Ponsonby no surprises to see either of those two in the team I've highlighted Ponsonby in the graphic for a lot of experience she's gaining for a young player Luke Connor probably one of my favorite players on the team so it's always good to have her in there as well Natalie Delamere one of the world cup winners for 2022 awesome to see her recalled as well she's actually played a bit of number eight for Bay of Plenty in the Farah Palmer Cup this season so getting proper game time with her and Luca Connor both in the same club side it's been very interesting to see that play um, a bit of an unconventional way of getting them both on the pitch but you know what it works it's cool good on them for doing it great to see Dallin Bear back in black just a shame to see um, Grace and Angle drop out of the team as she does have a bit of promise on her side luckily Ponsonby is the regular starter so there's still some youth in the number two jersey the front row two debutants at loose head prop Kate Henwood has recovered from a bit of an injury that saw her take a bit of a sideline part in a recent camp that I was photographing um, that the Black Ferns had here in Hastings. Uh, Crystal Murray, one of the World Cup winners, always awesome to see who retains the goal kicking in Northlander, always an entertainer on that pitch. And joining her is Chris Felico of the Blues. She was also um, one of the players who was at this camp, filling in for Henwood, obviously impressed. She's got a bit of potential, so it'll be interesting to see how she goes over in the number one jersey if she gets a decent opportunity. On the tight head side, no surprises to see Amy Rawl or Talia Kalori Vali. Got a lot of beef up front with those two in the pack. Going to help us win a lot of scrums, those two. And Sophie Fisher, another really promising player from the Blues. She has got herself in after Auckland won the FPC. She was another player in the recent camp. Got a lot of potential this one as well. She is probably going to get a few scrum penalties for us as well. Great to see her in the team. The most wholesome story of the day. It's sad to see no Jonah Woo over at lock but Charmaine Smith is back in the team great to see that a few years back she actually had to retire medically due to a spinal injury but after becoming a mother for the first time she was able to return from the spinal injury come out of retirement and now two or so years later she is a black fern once again after being a world champion back in 2017 absolutely awesome to see this Wahini back in black the uh, other locks of course Chelsea Bremner Maya Roos the regular starters no surprises of course both are absolutely awesome players and Maya Roos really starting to give me the feeling she's going to chase down Kendra Coxedge's record for most caps black fern of all time Loose forwards, Alana Bremner really developing herself into a lock, 6 and 8 at this point, getting some real versatility on her side, 6 jersey though, it belongs to her at this point, do not move her away from it, Kennedy Simon the co-captain as well, you can say the same thing about her and the number 7 jersey, though she does prefer being at number 8 at club level, um, had a few yarns of her about that in my interview with her as well, so you can uh, watch that after this video if you're keen, anyway Liana Miki Ali 2, another one who is absolutely crucial to this team surely I don't have to say much more about her she is a genetic freak and Layla says she missed out on the Pacific Four um, due to injury which was really gutting after a really good season for the Hurricanes power and Super Rugby so great to see she's found her feet back with Manawatu and is ready to finally get that test debut after getting a contract earlier this year Lucy Jenkins has to be retained as well has to be the replacement off the bench of the key matches she is a match winner that young lady with all the turnovers she wins seriously you take her to like anywhere crazy she is going to steal pretty much everything she's that good at finding the turnovers stealing them getting it done for the team the back line's also got some pretty good picks Ariana Baylor is back at halfback I was quite perplexed quite worried about a lack of depth potentially 
at nine after she was um, unavailable for the Pacific Four, not included in the team. I'm very happy to see her back in the team. Can she finally live up to the promise and take Kendra Coxedge's um, legacy, I guess, as the greatest Black Ferns nine? It's a hard challenge to do, but the door's wide open. No one's really quite established themselves as the first choice nine at this point. Adriana Benito Tohenu, because this is a shorter World Cup cycle, the last World Cup was supposed to be in 2021, I think we're going to get a bit of a more prolonged career for her as she was the first choice during the pack four. Iritana Hohaya, really good to see her in there as well. She's, I guess, the young answer to the two. Baylor potentially the first choice. Marino Tohiru, the Haka leader, jersey number 21 off the bench. Really good off-field leader as well. A probable coach for the future, I had to guess it myself. And then, of course, the one with the promise backing them up. First five, same old, same old. Rosie Kelly, Lua Heidemont. Hazel Tubik is available for selection again. She's come back from injury but very recently so maybe they just felt it wasn't quite time enough to put her back in there good to see that um rosie's been retained after um she really gave it a good crack after debuting and the skip Rua Hay Demont, so much mana never get rid of her on the team please keep her in there as a coach after she retires i don't want her to ever leave this national team midfield though um, I worry over here, it's looking a bit light. Firstly, Kelsey Tanishi has gone back to sevens, and Grace Brooker has seemingly been dropped, which is absolutely gutting. Amy Duplessis and Sylvia Brunt, therefore, have to remain the first choice midfield combo. They set the world on fire during the Pacific Four series. Power, pace, kicking, defense, turnover winning, those two can do it all. They are a great combo. Keep them at it. They were in the 2022 World Cup, backing up the two seven stars for a reason. The 12 and 13 jerseys, pretty much theirs to lose for those two. The yarn 10 and 12 axis as well with Brunt and DeMont. Don't fix it, this isn't broken. Patricia Maliepo, though, could give Rosie Kelly a bit of competition for the reserves. Uh, Patricia Maliepo can play 10, 12, and 15. Considering how quick she is as well, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see her covering the wing if worst came to worst. I don't think she'll have to quite do that, though, because of the outside backs. Dude, we are stacked. We got pace over there. Caitlin Vaha'akolu is continuing her successful conversion from League to Union, which is great to see. And Martha Mataeli, she's been a player who's probably been near the surface of a call-up for a few years now. So after finally just getting the job done with Canterbury, scoring all those tries, finally a cap for Martha Mataeli. About time to see that. Tanika Willison out of the frame as well. So Ruby Tui is back. One of the headline names in this team for sure. She is back from sabbatical, enjoying her time in the USA, and now she is ready to rock for the WXV. Mirirangi Paul and Renee Holmes, real stars of the pack four. Holmes, of course, the goal kicker for the World Cup. Great to see them in there as well. So guys, what do we think of this team and what do I think of this team? I think it's pretty good. It's appropriate that there's a bit less in experience compared to the uh, Pack 4. The WX15 is going to have fierce opposition such as the Welsh, the English, the French. It's going to be a rough ride for people who aren't quite ready for test level. You're going to have to be mentally strong to face teams like those. And so I'm happy to see a lot of experienced players, I guess, like Baylor, Smith, um, getting recalls. Going to be great to see Natalie Delamere back as well. This is going to be one heck of a tournament the WXV I can't wait for it make sure as well to um, visit the uh, Laurie O'Reilly Cup it's going to be a great test between the Black Ferns and the Wallaroos cheers for watching today's video guys I'm going to see you later cheers from Max